Okay, so this is the February topic analysis. I'm Ishan. I'm a junior at Ardrey Kell in North Carolina. And if Daniel wants to introduce himself. Yeah, my camera is not working right now, but I'm Daniel. I, Because I don't debate with my school, I feel like it kind of doesn't make sense if I disclose it. But I'm a junior, been debating for three years on the National Circuit PFLD. Yeah, okay. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to first talk about the topic and then uh, common clash ground. We're going to move into arguments where we're going to have some that are carded and then we're going to have some experimental arguments, which is basically we don't have them carded and they're a little bit weird, but you could probably make an argument about them. And then once again, questions at the end. Okay. So what we want you to get out of this is that it's just building a foundation. This shouldn't be like all you're doing on this topic. As we mentioned, we're only going over a few arguments. Some aren't carded. We're also going to give you ideas for things like blocks, but those aren't carded either. You obviously need to do more prep outside of this. Okay. Daniel, you want to do this? I mean, uh, yeah, with this, it's... This is just the topic, and uh, we're going to get into kind of breaking down the keywords in the topic on the, um, just like what, ne like what net specifically the topic means by United States federal government ban single use plastics, because that's at the end of the day, what you're actually arguing. <clears throat> those are kind of the actual, those kind of dictate the actual meaning of the resolution, the actor, the actor, the action and what they're acting on. Okay, so the federal government has three parts, the legislative, the judicial, and the executive. So because of the nature of this resolution, we're assuming that it's going to go through all three parts and that it's not going to be repealed by any of the three parts. But you could reasonably make arguments about like how a legislative implementation might be more likely and how that would affect something versus an executive implementation. Yeah, so to ban, as the definition by Merriam-Webster has says, it's to completely prohibit the use, performance, or distribution of. And if you're thinking about this in terms of single-use plastics, then then overall, then you 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 should probably think about like the consequences of, of banning them overall. Like, what are some overarching problems with them? For example, it's it's a kind of contentious issue the, the issue of climate change uh, climate change and like ocean pollution and both of those are in part ha have some way to do in part with single use plastics but th that's not the long and short of it because we're going to be getting into certain subsets of single use plastics that have good that have very important uses that by that by instating in a complete ban on single use plastics you might be forfeiting and that's your net ground. The aft ground is probably going to be more so generic issues of single use plastics where us the neg gets the freedom to pick out small subsets of the resolution and argue why banning single use plastics would be a bad idea for that reason. And banning single use plastics would probably also ban United States manufacturing of those single use plastics. Okay, so Single-use plastics are basically just any plastic that's intended to be used one time. So that obviously includes things that we all think about, like packaging, wrappers, straws, plates, like plastic straws, plates, stuff like that. But NEG, like what Daniel said, NEG has the opportunity to go to more specific things. So single-use plastics also is used a lot in laboratory equipment and medical technologies for things like syringes, petri dishes, disposable bags to prevent things like cross-contamination. And it's also going to be used in contraceptives, which is something we're going to see that the NEG does not want to ban. So yeah, if you're the NEG, one good, there's probably more stuff than this that's important. But if you're the NEG, you probably want to be looking into specific uses that are like almost irreplaceable. Okay, so some common clash ground. Yeah, so kind of how we went over in the definition of band, we said that it would most likely include a ban on uh, production because of because it is a complete 
prohibition of, but there could be an argument made that it doesn't, in which case the AF might have some more defensive ground when it comes to the United the United States maybe not actively being a consumer of single-use plastics, but being a producer and that having some sort of benefit. And you could also and you could argue and you could argue that a ban would not necessarily involve restricting the manufacturing of of it, which is definitely some neg which the neg definitely does have some ground on assuming that it does. But but that's one of the but that's probably going to be a fairly big stasis point in the debate. Uh, you also have the idea of whether the U.S. plays a major role in plastic pollution. So obviously the U.S. isn't the only country in the world. So if we ban it, it might not have a massive impact. Countries in developing countries, especially countries in Asia, they contribute somewhere between, I think, 50 to 90 percent of plastic pollution in the ocean. That's the ocean specifically. So you can obviously go a lot like you can obviously look into that a lot more. But for both the AF and the NEG, the question is, how much does the U.S. as an like as a country contribute to plastic pollution, and whether our ban like us banning plastic single use plastics will actually do play a major part in curbing pollution? Um, what because as we said earlier the NEG is going to be able to exploit the fact that the AF has to completely ban single-use plastics. We we would see the NEG capitalizing on that and going for a lot of subsets of plastics being, or I guess as some other PF topics say, just on balance better to keep around or completely irreplaceable. But there are definitely some articles that I have seen. I'm, I, I don't remember if they're in the current iteration of the live doc, but I do remember that some of the arguments that the net has is are able to be somewhat mitigated by the fact that there are alternatives being developed, and that doesn't necessarily go for every possible single use plastic. But that is definitely that is definitely one point of the debate that you should probably be, get somewhat familiar with. Uh, and then the other part of alternatives is: are they better? So when we think of alternatives, we're thinking of things like styrofoam paper, stuff like that. But the question is for both the, for both sides is whether like the harms of styrofoam are worse than the harms of stuff like single use plastics. The other part of the alternative debate is what actually counts as single use plastics. So there's these there's stuff like bioplastics and compostable plastics, which are technically still plastics and still single use. But there is a lot of debate around whether that actually would fall under a single use ban because it doesn't have the same environmental ramifications as like a traditional single use plastic would because it's meant to be environmentally cheaper. So in that it's meant to be environmentally better. So in that case, the neg might have more ground saying that alternatives aren't as bad as the AF would say. And then the last point that we were thinking about is where the actual plastics go once they've been used because the only the definition that is the general consensus is pretty much just plastics that are intended to be disposed of immediately after use but it doesn't specify how it's disposed of for example if the single use plastics were to be recycled that could be that could be some sort of alternative solvency for a lot of issues that the f might raise about single use plastics there's also the there's also the question that the AF could respond with of the effects of recycling and the amount of materials required in order to have a reliable or reliable and efficient method of recycling some just any X single use plastic. And while the question isn't necessarily worded like this, I feel like the I feel like the better way to think about the question is honestly just is recycling a viable alternative? Because I feel like that will be one of the, probably the most general interpretation of this sticking point. Okay, so now we're to the part that everyone actually wants. So these are the eight arguments we're going to be going over. On top of this- I think we have more. Yeah, on top of this, 
we're going to have two experimental arguments. They're not like on this slide, but for both AF and NEG, they're going to have two experimental arguments each. They're not carded on the live doc, but there's something you should definitely be looking into. Okay, so starting with the F, the first major argument is that there's poor waste management. So right now what we're seeing is that single-use plastics go to one of three places. Either they're incinerated, which means they're burnt off in incinerators and that generates energy. They're disposed of in landfills. And then the third thing is that they're recycled. I didn't put that on here, but that's the third option. So basically the idea is that if we're banning single-use plastics, that means less is going into waste, less is being disinerated, incinerated, recycled, and disposed of into landfills. And we don't want, uh, plastic waste generates a lot of problems. So if you're talking about landfill specifically, where which is currently where most of them go, single-use plastics are broken down by specific bacteria that live in these landfills. And when the bacteria breaks down the single-use plastics, it releases methane, which is a greenhouse gas that's like, I think 20 times more potent than carbon dioxide or something. So the problem is, the, so the idea is if we have less single-use plastic waste, we have less being broken down by these bacteria and less being turned into methane. Another problem with landfills is that they're often built next to low-income and minority communities. So if we ban some loose use plastic, obviously we're going to have smaller sized landfills and it's going to hurt these low income and minority communities less. The third thing that's a problem with uh, single use plastic waste is incineration. Incineration burns off plastic, but plastic is made from things like oil and natural gas. So when you're burning that off, it's releasing toxic chemicals into these low, in low income and minority communities that's harmful to them. This isn't on the slide, but if you want to talk about recycling, there's a lot of ways you can go that says recycling is bad too, because it takes a it uh burn it creates a lot of emissions, it takes up a lot of energy. So if you want to say that uh single use plastics go into recycling, and if we ban them, we're gonna have less volume into recycling. There's a lot of ways you can go on saying how that's a bad thing because we don't want as much recycling. Okay, so the two major impacts are first climate change. So when you incinerate plastics and when it's when it goes into methane, it releases carbon di it, or when it goes into landfills, it releases carbon dioxide and methane, which are both greenhouse gases contributing to climate change. If you're running climate change, you probably want to have it as a scalar impact, which is basically that this amount of climate change causes this amount of deaths, because it's probably going to be really hard to convince someone that single use plastics are going to put us over the edge but it's still a viable impact to have. And then the second the second uh, main impact is health issues. So when we're releasing, uh, when we're incinerating plastics and doing uh, putting plastics into landfills, it pollutes nearby water sources and causes air pollution, which hurts uh, these uh, minorities and low income communities. If you're running this impact, you'll probably wanna do a structural violence impact because it doesn't have the greatest magnitude but if you're running a structural violence framework, it will help you kind of win more rounds, especially in front of tech judges. And then the biggest block to this is that single-use plastics aren't the only waste going to landfills and they aren't the only waste getting incinerated. So if we ban single-use plastics, we're probably gonna see the same problems we've been seeing with like this water leaching and air pollution because like other plastics that are not single use are still going to landfills and there's other types of waste like organic waste, stuff like that, that still goes to landfills and that still causes the same problems that single use plastics does. Okay, so this is, this actually was very similar to something that was run on the LD topic right before this one that was pretty common. But because on because honestly it was fairly similar in terms of how of, of like what angle you're taking, so in the status quo Biden's hypocrisy on sustainability goals are just like, or just overall climate or just like a climate benchmarks has kind of put the United States in a bad light in the foreign stage, particularly China, which is what this can is which which is what this contention primarily focuses on, and. There is a very strong argument to be made 
that single use plastics are probably are one of the greatest targets of sustainability goals. As a matter of fact, I think the evidence I used for this link was very specific to how how there was X sustainability goal and single use plastics were a main focus of it or directly violated it. And and so there is and so the card that's marked internal link or IL, that's actually it's actually kind of more of just a solvency guarantee, like because the entire because the question that the neg will probably be asking the AF in cross examination if you read this contention, which it's pretty lengthy, but if you end up reading this contention, they're probably going to be asking if anything will actually be done and there will because there is because there is pretty clear evidence that china wants to cooperate with the u.s they just don't trust the u.s because of past political conflict past past like proxy war through allied force uh through their allies so just overall not very good relations and the only way that China is going to follow along is if the U.S. does it first, because as I mentioned before, United States credibility is not doing too great right now. And there is a pretty good piece of evidence that's that's pretty contextual to the current day. That's that says that China that that says that relations having a good relation with China is key to at least at the very least mitigating and possibly ending the conflict in Taiwan, which if you haven't been keeping up, China has been attempting to regain sovereignty over Taiwan in because of past conflicts that happened in, I want to say, the 1940s. And they're going back and trying to reclaim them now. But the amount of destruction that's done through that, the the general the lives lost and and in this in the context of this contention, arguably worse in the context of this contention at least, the for the foreign political conflict that arises from that and stopping this is key to preventing future war and the evidence that i've got specifically says extinction but if you're reading this on anything but a national circuit panel i would highly recommend you don't have that because they are not going to buy it. extinction it happens anyway but even if you don't have that you could probably edit the tagline on the card for it to just say war and it would be a lot more believable but over but overall either impact works it's just a matter of the panel that you have yeah in terms of strategy that's definitely something you want to be reading more so on tech judges whereas this one is probably more of a lay argument so the argument is that we're seeing single use plastic manufacturing increase in the US and we're also seeing demand increase, which makes it kind of cyclical. So we're seeing like a, like an exponential increase, basically, in manufacturing of single-use plastics in the U.S. But that's problematic because single-use plastics, specifically, they the manufacturing of them causes emissions. But it causes a lot of emissions because single-use plastics, or all plastics in general, all plastics, but specifically single-use plastics, are made from the burning of oil and natural gas. That's something you won't see with a bunch of other products where like oil and natural gas are the way to make them. For plastic specifically, that's how they're made. You have to combust oil and you have to combust natural gas that releases carbon dioxide, which once again causes climate change. Once again, you probably want to be running a scalar impact with this because it's going to be hard to convince someone that... Uh, single-use plastics are going to put us over the edge of climate change. But it's a good way to go because you're, because it causes a lot of emissions. And I think in the live doc specifically, it says that the emissions from like 30, plant, 30 uh, manufacturing facilities is equal to something like 3 million cars on the road, which is a huge number. It kind of shows you the scale. And that's just that's just one part of this. The other part of this is things how is stuff about how like manufact not manufacturing distribution and transport of single use plastics also causes a lot of emissions and single use plastics are 
you have to put more energy, you have to manufacture more single use plastics than you would for regular plastics because the volume of single use plastics you need is so much more than you would need of reusable plastics because you need to make a lot more. And simultaneously, you would also need to transport a lot more and distribute a lot more, which would also contribute to more emissions. So what the AF could say is that we're going to be reducing manufacturing, but also as we transition into something like reusable plastics, we won't have to manufacture as much, we won't have to transport as much, and we won't have to distribute as much, which would cut down on emissions drastically. The blocks you want to be running on this is, first of all, single-use plastics is a small portion of emissions. And we're going to probably be increasing uh, manufacturing and other alternatives, which would also increase emissions as a byproduct. Another thing is that the U.S. isn't the only country manufacturing single-use plastics. Other countries do it too, and they're going to continue doing it or even increase the amount of plastics they're manufacturing, which would increase climate change. A third block is that new tech is reducing emissions. I mentioned bioplastics earlier. Once again, the NEG could argue that's not topical, but they take a lot fewer emissions to produce. And another block that's not on here, but you could say is, again, that manufacturing isn't included in the ban. It could just be the distribution and usage of single-use plastics that's illegal, but we might still be able to manufacture and export single-use plastics to other countries. Okay. A fourth argument is microplastics. So microplastic concentrations, microplastics are basically fragments of plastic that are like very small. I think it's five nanometers is a definition. And its concentrations in the environment are increasing, especially in the ocean, but also just on land and in consumer products. And if we decrease single use plastics, we're decreasing plastic waste and plastic waste, specifically the breakdown of plastic waste in things like landfills are what uh, creates single use plastics. And we, we've seen single-use plastics pretty much everywhere. I'm sure you heard they're in your fish, they're in your meat, they're everywhere. But they're also in things like bottled water. There's hundreds of thousands of microplastic in a liter of bottled water. That card is on the live doc. I don't remember the, uh, the name of the, card, the citation, but that's on the live doc. And basically, it creates a lot of human health problems. They've been linked to cancer. They've been linked to like digestive issues. But yeah, that's the that's the big thing. But also, it threatens animals specifically because we're seeing we're seeing uh, single use plastic or we're seeing microplastics being found increasingly in the oceans. Specifically, there's a card in the live doc about the Great Lakes and how we're seeing it uh, microplastics increasingly there, and that's hurting wildlife, and that hurts biodiversity. And you could be running any number of biodiversity impacts on there. But once again, the big blocks are that other countries put microplastics into the ocean and they arguably put more microplastics into the ocean than we do. The way that Af the AF can get around this blocks, the, uh, this argument is that saying, sure, we're seeing microplastics in the ocean, but other countries aren't here dumping microplastics into places like the Great Lakes or bottled water. We're getting, that's being collected here. That's happening right here in the US. And if the US cuts down, we're gonna see a cut down on microplastics in our own environment. Another thing is that single use plastics aren't the only thing that are creating microplastics. Reusable plastics also create microplastics that goes into the environment and affects human health. They're equally dangerous if they come from reusable plastics. The way the AF gets around this is that single use plastics are disposed of more often than a uh, multi-use plastic, which means more disposal means there's creating more microplastics, which creates more health problems. And uh, on the health problems specifically, they, there's a card, there's, the card is uh, on the live doc, but I think I said cancer, it's linked to other things like inflammation, mitochondrial disease, endocrine disorder, stuff like that. Okay. So these are experimental arguments. 
they're a little bit weirder and they're a lot less stock definitely we don't have the cards on the live dock but there are they are stuff you should be looking into so the first thing is plastic exports so earlier i mentioned how we're doing we're uh recycling some uh single use plastics the thing is a very small amount gets recycled domestically a lot of it we export to developing countries on top of that we export to developing countries just to like get some plastic out of the us it's not just to recycle so if we ban single use plastics we're banning plastic we're we're cutting down on the amount of plastic waste we have and we're going to have to export less to developing countries the problem is that these developing countries don't have great waste management systems so a lot of the a lot of the plastics we send to be recycled to developing countries don't actually end up recycled they end up in those countries landfills and whatever they have like their incineration and another thing we're doing is we're exporting plastics to more developed countries like Canada and South Korea the problem is they're going around and just re-exporting them to the developing countries so that creates two main problems. The first is emissions. Because we're exporting th uh, tons of micro, or not microplastics, tons of single use plastics to these countries, it creates a lot of emissions because these big ships create a lot of emissions. That once again is another link into climate change that you wanna be running. But the other problem is, is it creates diseases. When these plastics end up in developing countries, they create a lot of problems. One of them is that they're a breeding ground for mosquitoes, which are a vector of diseases for things like malaria that creates diseases. Another thing is that often they can end up clogging drainage systems, which causes flooding in these countries. It's happened in places like Bangladesh. And that once again spreads waterborne diseases because you have water getting everywhere. So the big blocks to this are that some countries have actually banned imports of waste. I think both China and India have have banned imports of plastic waste from the US. The way the AF gets around this is saying that not all countries have banned waste. And actually when we ban when India banned imports, we actually saw, I think it was to Malaysia, we started exporting more and more plastics to Malaysia and it's created the same amount of health problems. And Another thing that you can say is that other countries like Canada and South Korea are going to continue to export to developing countries. Also, I forgot to say this, but on the impacts, I think it's somewhere between half a million to a million people die in developing countries because of plastic pollution. That's not plastic pollution from just the U.S., but the U.S. Always, obviously plays a major role in that. So if we're cutting down on the plastics that are in developing countries, we're cutting down in the amount we're cutting down on the amount of deaths we see. The second experimental argument is about disasters. So basically, littering is a big problem, and we're seeing the buildup of single-use plastics in both urban and wilderness areas from both litter and improper waste management. That creates two problems. The first is wildfires. So what we've seen is that as we've increased the concentration of wilderness of single of single use plastic waste in wilderness areas they've actually contributed to some wildfires because they're flammable and they can they're a catalyst of the fire basically so if we're cutting down if we're banning single use plastics we're cutting down on the amount of waste and we're going to be decreasing the severity of wildfires Another problem is what I talked about earlier on clog they clog up water drainage systems and they're causing flooding that happened in Bangladesh. But in the US specifically, it's gotten pretty close in places like San Jose. It's been clogging up uh, water drainage systems. They recently had to pay, they had to spend millions on clearing up those drainage systems. And it was pretty close to causing a flood. Floods obviously kill people, but Another problem, another impact would be climate change. Once again, wildfires create emissions, but also they reduce the amount of trees, which are carbon sink, and it contributes to climate change. Again, you want to be running a scalar impact here because you're never going to convince anyone that's going to put us over the edge.
The biggest blocks to this are that with climate change, floods and wildfires are increasing because of just general weather patterns that are shifting. But also there's a bunch of alternate causes to things like wildfires. Plastics aren't the only thing that are causing wildfires. And we've seen, yeah, that's basically the biggest thing. And uh, same with floods. Floods aren't the only, pl plastics aren't the only thing causing floods. So we're going to see them happen either way. The way the AF gets around this is just that floods and wildfires are a lot more severe when we have plastic buildup. Okay. Okay. So this one is a pretty simple, pretty stock one. So I'll just get over it pretty quickly. It's a it's a pretty common argument on basically every topic that some facet of the topic will cause the United States economy to collapse. And in this case, it's the plastics manufacturing industry. Uh, industry. So if you remember the evidence on the affirmative saying that United U.S. China relations are strained, you can really use that for your advantage here because China controls a lot of America's or the United States production a lot or i wouldn't necessarily say control but the united states exports a lot of it to china and as a result if the united states were to hamper its own capabilities further then that would kind of then that would be a pretty big risk to them and this kind of goes both ways because the af could win that that fixing the relations means that reliance on china doesn't matter but then that could win that the relations never get fixed or that they're beyond saving and all we can do is save ourselves at this point. So this with within Chinese relations, if if you ever get in a debate with this, then that's going to be probably the sixth common clash ground. Like we went over five, but this would probably be what the sixth, this would probably or if not the only one in the debate, because it's it's very it's a pretty big point of contention. And if sides are running these arguments, then that's kind of the deciding factor, but overall, United States manufacturing relies on plastic spanning them increases reliance on China, and since the relations are strained, then economic downturn will lead to war. Yeah, and if you're running this on a lay judge, you could run the same links, but you could just keep it as an economic downturn. You could say that we're going to lose jobs, it might cause a recession if our economy is particularly fragile. Okay, another argument is that single-use plastics are used in the medical field. And one way they're used is that they're used in syringes. A lot of our syringes, actually, I think all of our syringes at this point, at least in the U.S., are single-use. Because previously, when we used multi-use sy syringes, it caused blood-borne diseases, especially in developing countries. And... It, those were things like hepatitis, HPV, and they infected millions of people. Also, the U.S. is a big uh, manufacturer of uh, syringes. So if we're manufacturing less or if we shift to manufacturing uh, multi-use syringes, they're probably going to go back to these developing countries. We're going to see more bloodborne diseases. And they're going to cause, cause more deaths. Another thing is that laboratories are dependent on single-use plastics. The problem, a lot of problems that laboratory face, fa laboratories face have to do with cross-contamination. So if you're uh, doing research on something like COVID, you don't want samples getting contaminated. If you have reusable plastics, that's a lot more likely, and we're going to see innovation slowed down. Another problem with cross-contamination is in hospitals. So things like IV bags, syringes, uh, gloves, they're all single use. So if we have like multi-use gloves, multi-use IV bags, stuff like that, it's going to cause cross-contamination. It's going to increase the rates of disease we see in hospitals. If you're running this on a tech judge, one, you might want to run this as a pandemics argument, but you're going to need the internal link that laboratories are important to responding to public health crises. So obviously for something like COVID, we need a laboratory to develop vaccines we needed a laboratory to figure out that would, this was a pandemic in the first place. We needed a laboratory to develop efficient testing. And if we're going to see problems like cross-contamination in a laboratory, it's going to slow down innovation, or it's just going to produce completely wrong innovation that might end up hurting people. Also, if we're using things 
like uh, multi-use syringes, IV bags, we're probably going to see diseases spread like COVID because those bags are going to multiple patients, which is going to uh, increase the chance of, it's going to increase disease spread and it's going to contribute to pandemics. The blocks are that we're probably going to see innovation in materials that labs use to solve for cross contamination, or they can just shift to alter. They can shift to non plastic materials. I don't know what these would be, but there's. I did. I did. I did see some cards out there that said that labs have in fact shifted. Some universities have in fact shifted away from single use plastics because laboratories and hospitals are actually one of the number one contributors to the single use plastic waste problem, something like 20%, I think comes from hospitals. And if we see innovation, that's also a good thing that could function as a turn because we're gonna see innovation, it's gonna become a lot more efficient and it's gonna contribute less to the environmental problems. Uh, this one's an interesting one. I left some of the generic text on there. Please just ignore that. So th this is a pretty quick, this is a pretty quick one, but also kind of weird one. What this contention is doing is, bro, you skipped over it. Yeah, my bad. Okay. So the way that this contention works, and this is carded, is that the, ne the, the negative is critiquing the way that the affirmative is going about doing something because the way that the affirmative just goes ahead and tries to ban single use plastics as like a patch like a fix all patch solution is directly harmful and there is evidence that this directly leads to social problems and if you're not in your local like NSDA national Nats qualifier you can read extinction but there's other impacts as well and and uh this is and there's also evidence in the contention saying that doing nothing is actually overall net better for society and 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 attempting to hyper manage the environment does a lot more harm than good but there is also evidence on the flip side saying that without without controlling the environment we can't we can't fix any social problems or fix them much less efficiently than we otherwise would and also just just uh any sort any risk of link argument that if that since climate change is existential we might as well try because we know that climate change is existential we don't necessarily know that this contention is existential so you could just argue that angle yeah so this is another contention that was born out of LD that I saw working specifically on this topic somewhat, and we don't have cards for this, but the pandemic, which is recent enough that I would say that the contention is unique enough. It fueled a boost in, in startup companies, like small startup companies, just people with their friends in their backyard. And the link is where it gets tough because I'm sure something like this exists, but you would need to find evidence saying that plastics are integral to to a substantial number of startups not all of them but just a substantial number of them and from there the rest of the contention goes very similar to the economics contention where no capital investment leads to stagnate to economic stagnation which if you're reading this on a lay panel you could just impact immediately to the loss of dollar hegemony but if not you can further go on to extinction on the link level there is evidence talking about how small businesses and specifically in like food rely on uh, single use plastics for things like packaging. And you could probably reasonably make an argument about small labs being small businesses and them also relying on single use plastics. And this one, um, Summit CC, Connor Chow, if you are watching this right now, I am dedicating this one to you. But so with the recent advent of Roe v. Wade, the all the all the protests in the Supreme Court overturning that overturning the decision and resulting in the fact that states are now able to de be the sole determiner of whether abortion is legal in that state, that has kind of that has put 
political tension specifically in reproductive rights on edge but you could also have a second uniqueness card that's that's especially recent that says that because we're moving towards the election season it's it makes whatever links that happen even more or it increases the strength of any link that happens and in, and also magnifies the probability of the impact just because political tensions will naturally be higher but combined with existing tension leads to a very on edge scenario and even if it doesn't ban and even if a ban on single use plastics wouldn't necessarily ban all contraceptives specifically all condoms in fact it wouldn't ban most of them it would be it's the symbolic nature of banning even some of them that kind of matters here because this contention isn't necessarily going for the impacts of the direct impacts of banning something it's going more for the social implications and a perceived attack on reproductive rights will spill over causing a lot pro causing probably a lot more protests than usual because of the scope of people it affects and because of the repeated i guess quote offen offenses on the government's part if you if that's the way you want to put it and then from there there there's obviously going to be people who or who are just contrarian or who just genuinely believe that the ban on plastics was a good idea for one reason or another in its entirety. And so an increased division over politics leads to rise of populism and the impact as with any other politics disadvantage is just Trump V2, which usually gets impacted on the national circuit to extinction, but I don't have any politics cards, unfortunately, so that's – so honestly, you could probably end it there for a lot of judges, just depending on your judges – just depending on how you perceive your judges' political orientation. If if you go to the wiki, there's definitely a lot of – there's a, definitely a lot of impacts, especially – it was a it was a big uh, – politics was a big argument on student loans, so – if you go to the wiki, I'm sure you'll find a lot of evidence about why either Trump is bad or Biden is good or something.